Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, The Growing Developer. This is the third part of our code generation series, and the topic for today's tutorial is JSON serializable. While this concept is comparatively smaller than Freezed or other tools that we'll pick up in the later part of this series, but this is very powerful and actually makes your code less error prone, makes your code error free, and you don't even need to worry about writing serialization and deserialization code. Everything happens using this plugin, this tool. So without wasting any time, let's just jump into this video. The Growing Developer. First thing first, let's just set up our project to use JSON serializable. You need to go to your pubsplug.yaml file and in your dependency section, you need to add JSON annotation and as your dev dependency, you need to add build runner and JSON serializable. Now we have already seen a bit of it in our freeze tutorial video. So if you haven't yet watched freeze tutorial videos yet, uh, so I suggest you to watch it right away. And uh, I'll also attach the link somewhere in the cards here. And uh, yeah, let's, let's quickly jump into our project and see what it is doing. So this is our plain old user class and this has an ID name email a date time birth date an optional phone number address type and inside this address we have a enum address type right now we have three complexities in this model that we need to actually handle when we write manually uh, the serialization day serialization code First thing, every field in this user class is not optional. Only the phone number is optional. So we have to specifically check for null values. Second thing, the birth date is of type date time. So we have to write our date time parts logic as well. Now the other thing is the address is of another type address. Now this is a nested object and we have to actually somehow write from JSON for this address class as well. Now it is very easy to forget these implementation and we can, and sometimes like uh, we spend a lot of time just writing these from JSON to JSON methods. And that, and that too are not 100% uh, free from errors. So let's see how we can make this model a bit concise, more robust, less prone to errors which automatically handles all the type conversion as well as enum types. So let's see. So first thing first, let's simply remove our from JSON and to JSON methods. So done. And done. Right, so we don't have from JSON and to JSON method. You can ignore this error here. Now, first thing, to make any class serializable or deserializable, we have to annotate it with JSON serializable annotation. So we'll say JSON serializable. Now this JSON serializable comes from our package JSON annotation. Next thing is because this is a nested class, that is this user class depends on the address class as well. So we have to annotate our address class with JSON serializable too. Make sense? We will discuss other annotations later. Let's just quickly write our from JSON and to JSON methods. Now the way you write from JSON to JSON is fairly simple, straightforward. So I'm just gonna copy the from JSON and to JSON methods. So for your user class, it will be something like this. And for your address class, it's gonna be exactly same, just the name changes, right? Right. So we have this user from JSON, and the way we write the from JSON is exactly same as freezed models. Underscore, dollar sign, and user, that is the class name from JSON. Similarly, for to JSON, we write underscore dollar user, that is the class name, and append this with two JSON string. It is exactly same with the address class as well. Now you can see that this is throwing some errors. Why? Because we don't know where these 
classes are setting or where these methods are setting and JSON serializable needs a part directive where it can store all the generated code so we need to add part what is it uh, user dot g dot dart so this is how the file name should look like that is the file name the actual file name user dot g dot dart dot g dot dart means that this is a json serializable file which stores all the converted uh, methods all right so after annotating this with json serializable we are not doing anything else writing from json to json and adding the part directive we have to run the dart build runner command now as you can see once this command uh, succeeds we have this user.g.dart and here is where the magic happens we have the user from json method already written for us we have to json method and from json method for address already written for us and you see that the birth date is already handled we are actually parsing the date here parsing the date and from and then to json as well we are parsing the date appropriately and for your enum it has already written the enum decode and encode methods how good is that we didn't have to write any conversion logic for our enums uh, for date time and even for the address class now we have some other useful annotations that comes along with the json serializable package such that let's say your json let's say your this json the name is not like this it ha it is user let's say name right but for some reason in your model you need you just want to keep this as name itself so what you can do is you can say you can annotate this field with json key and give the name as user name to make it string rerun your uh, code generation the build runner command and that's it now you see that inside your generated class we are actually referring to username now instead of name how good was that we simply just added an annotation and we can customize the keys as well next thing uh, let's say for this email we need to give it a default value or for this id we need to give it a default value how we can do that is again annotating this with json key and give it a default value of whatever type so this is a string so i can say that by default this should be empty right again every time you add a new annotation you have to rerun the build runner command so the code code is updated appropriately okay now similarly for your enum types you can annotate this with your json key let's say json key and it has an unknown enum value that is what if what if from your backend you get an enum type which you have not yet configured here so you can see that we have home work and other so if at all there is any other unknown enum that is sent from the back end so we can say that if the enum is not known by default it can be address type dot other and again we will rerun the build runner command well, let, let's give it a test run right so if you go to json serializable tutorial let's run this and you can see that it actually perfectly serializes and deserializes our code and we can see this make sense now right let's say let's say this enum we we have written home here but from the back end we are getting it uh, in form of like this capital all capital so how we can do that is annotate this with a json value and then we can say home similarly for work we can say work capital all right rerun our build runner command
and now if you go to your uh, the .g generated file you can see that we are actually uh, referring to capital home capital work here for our enum values makes sense so that should be pretty much it actually uh, what else okay yes there is another thing let's say this is nullable the name is nullable and in your 2json method you don't want to include this so if it is null you don't want to include it in your 2json method so what we can do is there is another field which says include if null and we can say false that is it will exclude this value the name if it is null right so you can read about all the parameters i'll also paste the link to this json serializable package it has list of all the parameters that you can use inside these annotations and uh, yeah that that pretty much sums this up Hope you like this tutorial. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me in the comment section. I'll try to reply to each and every one of you. And uh, if you haven't yet watched the, my other parts, the free tutorial, I suggest you, I highly suggest you to watch those videos. So that was all for this tutorial. Hope you like this video. Hope you learned something from this video. If you feel that I missed something, you can directly reach out to me in the comment section. I'll try to cover that up in the next part. So I always try to cover the basics first and then accumulate all the advanced concepts and make a separate video. If you want to stay connected with our channel, please subscribe and press the bell icon and meet you in the next part then.